Hello everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday Q&A. Eric Griffin here live and in the flesh. Still not still not out of the woods obviously in Arizona or anywhere with COVID for that matter, but we, you know, started working mo almost the entire staff actually except for four of us are in the office every day. Lynette has been working from her home studio and I've been here at the office. So today is the first day after 6 months. Uh, yeah. Um, April, May, June, July, Except August, September. March, yeah. yeah. Six, six months, months that we're doing a Q&A live together on air. So excited to be back. And uh, for those of you who don't know, tuning in for the first time, I take your questions, email to us at questions at itmtrading.com. And I put them on a one sheet. I ask them to her live. She has not seen any of these questions. Nope. So you get a real, true, live, organic response. <clears throat> and that's the way we like to do it. Lynette doesn't never wants to see the I questions in advance. Questions she wants to advance. be able to just give you give right off the top of your head, you know. And then the deep dives are things that she really wants to give you that that real, you know, researched, nuanced piece. So, um, so Jaden C asks in an economy mm -hmm. with Fed coin, I feel like that one should be read with movie voice. In an economy. <laughs> In an economy. See, he's having so much fun because this is the first time I've agreed to this. But I really have a very strong immune system, yes, and you've you been healthy too. Yes, so. I haven't gotten it either. Um, in an economy with Fed coin, UBI, and SPV purchase corporate bonds, what would be the role needed for commercial banks? Wow, actually, that's a really good question because up to that point, actually, it diminishes the role of the banks, which is the rise of the fintech. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason why you've seen large um, banks like JP Morgan, et cetera, really buying into the fintech uh, economy. But yeah, especially with UBI, that gives the central banks direct access. But they needed the banks to promote it. Let's kind of talk this through for a second. I was kind of thinking, because when I read the question, I thought, I also was like, wow, that's a really interesting question. And I kind of thought, I could see them being almost in a more of like the, like the, um, like the, um, not commercial, but the uh, private, you know, like lending, lending facility, right? So if you need a mortgage, you're not going to go straight to the Fed, right? You're going right. to go, you're going to go to the, you know, Wells Fargo, Chase, something like that. If you need a car loan, the, you know, CDs, that's where the fintech, like products and stuff, but, you'd still need a bank for that. Yeah, <clears> but <throat> if you remember, we did a piece, gosh, it's probably been maybe a year or so ago, and it, where we actually asked that question, what was the role? And when we looked at it, what we discovered or what I discovered and, and showed you guys was that the, the banks have the relationship with the clients. The Federal Reserve doesn't. So they need that relationship. So that's their link. But where they would have normally been distributing the Fed policy, that's the piece that's been, that will be diminished with all the advent of that new stuff. So the role of the banks is probably more about relationships. But that's also where you've got, um, you know, your Facebooks, your big tech companies. That's why, you know, <laughs> what we see more is a merger of the, bin, the big, the fintech and the big tech companies merging with the banks because, the, and, and then giving access to all that information to the Fed. Because what the Facebooks of the world have is they have the uh, data and they also have the ability to move you psychologically, right? So what it does is it really takes that perception management piece that was started back with Reagan in the 80s. It really takes that to a whole new level, but they don't have the relationship with the banks. So what the banks actually bring to the table in here is that relationship piece. You know, so you've got the Fed right there that then can control their their policy and how that goes directly to the consumer. So to almost the like a, a customer service 
face yes. to what the, the Fed and the central banks are up to. Yes, yes. And, and they've been working on this piece. So, um, yeah, I, I did one. Do you remember when I did that one? I don't even remember Gosh. what it's called now. Mm -hmm. But I definitely remember that piece because they were, you know, the, the press on it was how separate these two entities are. But when you look deeply, what you saw is how they were coming together because the banks have that relationship. I mean, how long have you been with your bank? My I don't point. Even know. Exactly, so my long. point. How long have you guys been with your bank? Right? It's you don't painful change. to even try to change. Exactly the point. <clears throat> exactly the point. So I think what we're really seeing, and we are, not I think, we are really seeing is a merger between the Fed, who has the printing press, the banks that have the customer relation, and then the big data all coming together, you know, surveillance economy. So that that's what it is. That the Fed coin thing is the thing that scares me the most. I know, mean now now you're not even you're not depositing money in the bank, right? Correct. It's just it's just there under the Fed's total control. They can spin it with, you know, hey, you can only spend it on this. You can, this is how much time you have to spend it. If you don't, it'll expire. You can control the velocity. They can control the velocity and the, um, the amount. Yeah, but let's kind of back up here because this is a really important topic. So I'm really glad that that question came up because it's, the, the, it's actually the Fed now. That's the name of the account but they're going to be issuing digital dollars, right? So, you know, that's what I've been saying forever. What they do is they keep the name the same right. and then the perception is nothing has changed. And especially when they just make that deposit, right? They push a button, takes no effort, takes no time, takes not, doesn't even take what costs are involved in that, right? And then, you know, you go, wow, there's, $1,200 a month or 4000 whatever that number is going to be. And it's easy to spend. The easier it is to take in, the easier it is to spend, the less value it all has. Right? So this is the setup to the hyperinflation. Now, uh, I was listening to CNBC this morning and they were, you know, one of their surveys. When, before you say, because you just said I'm listening to CNBC, we get a lot of people who comment on our channel about you listening to CNBC or like the mainstream media. I've got and, to. Right. Because I need I, I, to I wanna, know what they're saying. So let's go back and explain okay. that. And because people, they're like, why do you listen to that, you know, mainstream media? But oh, I, I, okay. I think it's super important to address that. And I don't want to, I'll write that down. We don't want to bypass that. So anyways, you're listening to CNBC. Okay. And, you know, I was listening to their surveys and they, they said that they, they don't anticipate the Fed raising the rates until uh, 2023 or something like that. And they can't raise the rates. So, yeah. And they're even going to allow it to run hotter, inflation to run hotter, which means that they're justifying the beginning of the hyperinflation. Now, a lot of the hyperinflation you know, I think may have already started and particularly when it comes to food and they can justify it because of the breakdown of the supply chain, et cetera. Right. But, um, you know, we have to understand when they're making this shift, they want to keep things as normal. This is what they say in their documents, which is why I listen to CNBC and read all the IMF stuff, you know, because they want to keep it as normal as possible. It's how they do the transition. And make no mistake, we are already inside of this transition. They needed to, to move up the timing of the use of, you know, people like me or people that are used to, like, like say, going into a store and buying something. Well, I'm not going into stores, right? So you're buying it online. That The assumption is, is you're going to get comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it. I really don't like it at all because I'm a locavore. I like to buy local and support the community. 
So I'm not comfortable with it. But all of this is really about speeding up that reset pattern. And we're already in it. It isn't just that last big or three big boom. They reset the currency a thousand times. It is, it's <coughs> nuanced. It's slow until it's fast, but we're already walking through it. There isn't one little doubt in my mind. And so let me go back to answer the CNBC. I do it because I need to know what people are hearing out there. Mm -hmm. I need to know what is being said. Do I believe them? Here's how I know if what they're saying is true or not. I listen to their words, but I watch their actions. If their actions are not congruent with their words, they're lying, lying, lying. But I need to know in order to be able to talk to people about it. And in order, you know, like I'll just hear like a little word or something like that, and that'll send me down this rabbit hole or that rabbit hole or the other rabbit hole. Right. You're always looking for how to disprove even what they're saying. Oh, 100%. <clears throat> because, it's because it's garbage. Because it's perception it's management. perception management. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for answering that because we get that a lot on the channel and I think it's important for people to understand Yeah, and I listen to Bloomberg and I read all the IMF reports and the BIS reports. I get so much stuff that comes into my inbox. I read Financial Times. I read the Wall Street Journal. I read a lot of stuff for that reason. And, it, and, and most of it, it is, is this congruent? Thank you, Daddy. Do what I say and not what I do. I mean, he hammered that into me. I mean, he didn't intentionally do it, and he was a great man. He was the best man I've ever He just would tell known. you to do stuff, and then he wouldn't do it himself. Yeah, he'd yeah. say, do what I, he actually would say to me, do what I say and not what I do. It was mostly around driving, right? Yeah. Honestly, it was because. <laughs> that's what you were always watching, watching well, him drive. He, he, Hold, he, I'm going to ask Megan something. Hey, Megan, okay. I, we should have probably asked you this before, but it, there's eight minutes until your meeting, so what, how do we want to handle this? Keep going. You're just going to roll through it? Yeah. Do you want to step out and grab grab Carl? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Just want to be oh, mindful okay. of that importance. If if you decide that you need to grab Carl, go grab him. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. Go. Thank you. And that way, people get to see you on camera for a second, anyway, which ah. they love to do. All right, Mark P. <laughs> and she's so pretty. Asks, how difficult will it be to buy silver and gold when there is a switch to a digital currency? If everything is monitored, it will be difficult to keep secure and secret. Well, it definitely will have an issue about keeping the secrecy of it. Uh, I don't know that it would be, it's already more challenging. I know that uh, one of the consultants told me this, one of her clients wanted to do a $75,000 buy, mm -hmm. but the bank would only let them wire 25000 a day. Yeah. So now they've she got had it. it. It's because she does it online and they have to do, they have limits for how much you can wire per day online. If she could go, if she went into the branch, they would allow her to do more. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't harass or give her a hard time or we've had, we've had customers yeah, that you have, would know this way we've had customers who have bought and, you know, and the bank was like, what are you buying? And they're like, gold and silver. And they're like, well, I, sorry, we can't send the wire for you. And they had to fight to get them to send the wire. Well, why did they even <laughs> answer that question? It's none of their business. Right. They ask me all the time when I go into the bank, like, why are you withdrawing this or what? And I say, it's, I literally say it's none of your business. Yeah. They don't push push me too much after that. But yeah. if they do, Sometimes I just Sometimes there's a nasty it. teller that wants to give you a hard time, though, yeah. uh, for sure. I'll just keep um, I so, think I think. So I think, you know, just to answer th th that question a little bit more deeply, you know, I think availability is going to probably be, and you could speak to that better right. than I probably can. Probably the most number one concern over whether or not you can buy it with digital dollars or not. Exactly. Yeah. I think you'll be able to. And, and in fact, because they're not going to means test the UBI, that's exactly what I intend to do with any digital dollars that they give me. They're just going to give it to anybody. They're going to give it to everybody. Hmm. They've got to get <laughs> the system in place. So yeah, they're just, giving it to everybody, no means testing. So I think you have a good point. It's probably going to boil down to more availability than it actually will be if right. it's a digital currency. Now, everything being monitored, keep it secret and secure, yeah. Ex but I would also argue, though, that anything you're doing is, I mean... I, Physical. You, you, if you have, have AT&T and you're texting people on your phone, it will, 
AT and T takes that information and then because they own Directv and then serves you up ads based upon that. So what you're texting people, and we learned about that. Uh, we learned about that because mm. we were meeting with some um, some people to help us, and they were telling us about those. And we were blown away. Like I couldn't believe. Yeah, Surveillance Facebook economy. Face, and Facebook has it, they u- utilize if you have the Facebook app, they're utilizing and they're listening and they're serving you ads on their on their uh, on their platform. So. You know, I think it's more diffi- I think it's difficult to keep anything secure and secret nowadays. If I mean, if you're sending emails, you know, Gmail, However, Yahoo, that's all monitored. Right. I mean, so. However, having said that, <clears throat> I have a tendency to give, you know, silver for births and gold for marriages. So when you give it away, when it's in physical form and you're holding possession of it, definitely no one will know that the receiver is getting it. Exactly. So they if might they ask, figure out well, that I you gave it away. It. Right. But, you know, I gave it away. Right. Gave it as a gift. Exactly. Yeah. So it's still going to be more private than anything you do online. A hundred percent. For sure. So, I mean, the only way I, I think that the digital currency makes it prohibitive if, is if they outlaw buying gold and silver. Right. Um, so Yazin asks. So you better get <clears> it now before they do. Yazin asks, okay. is it a good idea at this time to take a 30-year mortgage to buy physical gold and later pay the loan in deeply discounted dollars? We get this one a lot. You know, I don't think that's a horrible idea because the whole goal, and when, that's part of the strategy as well. The, the strategy of the government is to repay debt in currency that has mm-hmm. less and less and less and ultimately no value. So taking out a 30-year mortgage to do that, you know, honestly, that's what I'm doing with my bug out house. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could have paid cash for it, but I'm not willing to sell my gold to do that. Right. Right. So, but I have enough gold, never have enough gold, but I'm continuing what do you think? to buy more gold. And so that is my, that is my personal intent. I mean, it's definitely, I hesitate here because it's, it's definitely one of those things where, you know, I see the I see the Advantage. upside, right? right? Because if you can get a loan at three percent, and if you think gold's going up in the future, then you know, yeah, it probably makes sense. But at the same time, if you're retired, you're seventy years old, and you have your house paid off, and you know, God forbid something happens. Well, I didn't now- say to take out like on something that's paid off. Okay. I don't think you should take on so, debt in order to buy gold and silver. Okay. I do not. Okay. So then what did you mean? Well, what like I I thought that's what you meant. I'll pull I pull gold, pull a mortgage out and then buy gold and silver with it. No, I no, I just I don't think you should take on debt or jeopardize your position. Mm-hmm. But like I'm buying that bug out property. I know with that it's loan. way overvalued. Yes. Exactly. <clears throat> I know it's way overvalued. And then buy gold and silver with the rest of it so you could pay it off later. Exactly. When they do inflate it away. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because you know, even though we can't guarantee the future, I can absolutely guarantee you what these guys are doing to the currency. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, look, we've got 48, over 4,800 currencies that do not exist. But, you know, that goes back to the dynastic wealth stool. You mean that it failed over that time. That it failed. Yeah. Ex- well, yes, they have failed and they don't, they don't exist right. anymore. Right, right, right. They, they, you, you can't go and use them as a tool of Right, even the old Mexican peso, right? Exactly, Gone. exactly. But let's see. Um, I don't think this is something we have a lot. But you brought up the Mexican peso. All right, there's the peso, there's the uh, paper peso, and then there's the gold peso and the silver peso. Well, let's see. The paper peso has no value, maybe some value to collectors, maybe. But what about the gold and the silver pesos? Yeah, they say $50 on them, but they're worth a lot more than that. Worth about $2,400 $2, these days because it's okay. more than an ounce. So... So even though we can't guarantee it, we're doing the same thing. And the central banks are 100% committed to destroying the last little bit of vestige in the dollar. They're going to allow inflation to run hot. Once people go out and spend that money, now you've got, like, really, an unli- what are they saying? Unlimited amounts. Unlimited support. Unlimited. Unlimited. All right? Anything that is cheap and easy 
has less value than something that takes a long time and is rare. Dynastic wealth, three stools, real estate, rare collectibles, physical gold. But the physical gold is the most, in my opinion, the most important leg because it'll make sure that you can pay your property taxes and even put you in a position to be able to buy. Look at all, you know, real estate's going crazy. Everything is a tale of two places because the system is morphing. It's resetting, right? So you have real estate that's going crazy. And I know this is an overvalued market, except that was the hole in my strategy, right? That was the hole. And when I had to sleep with a gun in my bed, because I live in central Phoenix, I'm like, mm, well, this yeah. is not okay. I mean, with we me. were always telling you that we were scared for you to live down there. And I mean, in, including all of your, all of the, our viewers, you know, were saying the same thing. Right. So, I mean, it's smart that you, I, I'm, I think it's smart that you did it. Right. So, because you know, better be safe than sorry. A hundred percent. So, you have to look at what your goals are and you have to do this. But, I, but I, I'm telling you, if you guys have any holes, you know, we just got a little teeny taste. But I, there is not one, and you know, you know what I buy, mm -hmm. right? There isn't one little teeny weeny doubt in my mind what's happening to real money. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sh should be obvious to everybody. What? The whole strategy is let's just print as much money as we need to. I mean... <laughs> Since 2008, that's exactly, a, that's the strategy they've employed. Exactly, because I mean, the we system to, really what are we died dead. Seven trillion, trillion or something? And we were and at, that's we what were we at know eight, of. eight or seven in 2008. Right. I mean, they've, they've shown, without a doubt, they're going to print money at all costs. And they're, and they're telling you as well, right? <clears throat> so that's the do what I say and not what I do. Yep. Right? And what are they doing? They're buying gold. Hand over fist, they're buying gold. And do you think we really know how much gold they're buying? Because I don't. Well, I mean, China doesn't even report it. <laughs> all right, so Brian B. asks... Oh, you got me all heated with that one. Yeah. Sorry. Brian B. asks, you say there is going to be a reduction in the value for real estate, such as 85% per percent for residential and 95% for commercial. That's, that's, yeah, I think it'll look like Japan. So yes. will farmland suffer the same fate or will it have a different kind of outcome, do you think? Because well, of its, you know, its produ productive I use. Well, I think it's a combination because the small farmers right now are really in a very big problem. So right now we've got hunger and starvation. I was just reading a report where there are more people that are dying from starvation than from COVID, right? So that's already happening. However, they, we also have the big banks that would fund uh, the futures contracts. I mean, there is a good reason to have some derivatives. Derivatives, I'm a farmer, I grow something, but I don't know whether or not I'm gonna experience drought or blight or some other issue with my crops. Mm -hmm. So I buy a futures contract to guarantee that I can stay in business regardless of what happens to my crops. So my crops come in and I'm able to sell them. Okay, well that's just an insurance cost of doing business. But my crops don't come in, that ensures that I'm going into business. So this next part that's happening is you have a lot of the um, large banks that would fund those contracts to enable the small farmers to remain in business, pulling back from that area. So that means that you're just going to have like the big farms. So that is a really hard question to because ask. Because I see what you're. I see what the underlying thing of what you're saying is is that there'll be a there could be a glut of supply due to small farm failures, Correct. which would then drive down the value of those pieces of property. Right, and it would also then enable the large conglomerates to go in and buy them up. Which then would really be cheap. the opposite, though, of then pushing the prices up. Would right? be the opposite, Insta keeping exactly. them stable or pushing them higher. Well, yeah, that's kind of a nuanced, a really very nuanced question and answer. Right. It's it's you know because I thought for sure you were going to say, oh, farmland is going to be valued because it's productive nature and it, there's going to be demand because people are going to want to grow their own food and 
But I see what you're saying there. That's an interesting problem. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else that's really interesting because you just made that comment about thinking people would want to buy it because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister uh, has some property in Sedona, and she is a master gardener. I am definitely not a master gardener, but she is absolutely a master gardener. So she has food gardens in her gardens uh, it, at her house, uh, as well as some income producing because there's two buildings. I would have thought they would have snap that up who would have a, a buyer in oh, this you mean market she has it listed for sale she has it listed for sale and it's still listed for sale so there's not very much demand for be, like somebody who can immediately walk onto a farm and say here i've got i've got my ability to make my own food you'd think because right you'd now think it, you're talking it about was. all these zoom cities because of the zoom the zoom economy and how people are working from home that uh, a lot of these outlying areas from large metropolitan areas are being, the prices are being driven up because of it. it so it, you it's know a tale people of are moving. So I, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? How long has she had it listed for sale? Don't hold me to this. I'm going to say maybe, how, Megan, do you have any idea? At least a month. Oh, oh okay. she's out. No, she's had it listed for probably four months. Something mm. like that. That's interesting. It, it's very nice. It's a nice property, and it's like you're. I'm telling you right now, her dirt is gold. You know, you would move in, and you would immediately be able to feed Where's your she family. She's she wants to go further out. She's in Sedona, she and she's to, in Sedona proper. She wants to go even further. She, yeah, she yeah. wants to go further out. All right. So Andrew K asks, why would they go to gold? when it takes away most, if not all, of their freedom and abilities to manipulate the money supply. Plus, it also takes away their opportunity to grossly enrich themselves, right? Yes. Well, the only reason why they go to gold is the same reason why they've done it over 4,800 times, and that is about confidence. This is a con game, and con games require confidence. And when people are bloodied and battered and bruised enough, and we've been watching, I've even done stuff on confidence, and we've been watching it decline and decline and decline. So that's why they would have to do it when nobody, when people refuse to use the currency. So look, you can trust it again. It has gold backing. So that's why. That's the only reason, because you're absolutely right. They can't inflate things away. And then after a while, I'm not saying 100%, but then after a while, they start removing those protections again, just like they've done. I, I've got a piece, and I'm trying, I don't, I can't guarantee it for this week, but I'm going to try. I'm trying to get it done, where they're changing the rules again at the FDIC on deposits. So you've got, so that, you know, you think that you're safe because, hey, you're insured. Well, wait until you see this oh, piece. perfect. Right. And that was, you another know. Another layer to smoke to people. Great. A, another layer. A bail in anyone. Jeez. So, I mean, and then, yeah, I just came across this. I'm like, holy crap. So I'm going to try and get it done for this week. I'm not guaranteeing it. It might come next week. But so that's. You want to you know what I think is kind of funny? What? Is that Megan clearly wants us to end quickly because the live questions are missing <laughs> and it's just announcements right but she does have that appointment i so know we'll, i know we'll, well i'm glad i said that earlier then right so we're not doing live questions tonight if for today if you want to send us questions send them to questions at itmtrading.com and uh they hopefully may or may not be on the next q a well we'll, we'll give it a we shot we get hundreds and hundreds of questions so if you don't see your question there's a, there's a reason right um, but after this, I'm on, so the real estate, any of you guys with real estate, we're going to be talking about it because I'm going to be with Jason Hartman and that, and he's all about real estate. So I have no idea what he's going to ask me. It'll be really interesting. But for those oh, of you that want to know got, more, you got coffee with Lynette with Egon again. I do. That's awesome. Next week. Cool. Yes. But tomorrow I'm going to be on a uh, coffee with Lynette with Carrie and Van Hest. And he, is, he knows so much about the bullion houses and the COMEX exchange and how the, uh, we're going to talk a lot about how traders that normally are just rolling over contracts are standing for delivery and lots of other things. So I'm really excited about that one too. And yes, I'm very excited, of course. I love having Egon on. He's 
just so bright. We always have such good conversations. I just wish I could do it in Switzerland in yeah, front right. of the Matterhorn. That was a fake I, screen. I know. But, <laughs> we but could put he, you in front of the Matterhorn, too. I know. On the but Zoom. he could actually... But he, he does live at the base of the Matterhorn. That's, oh, that's why he really named neat. Right. That's why he named his company Matterhorn Asset Manager. Huh. So yeah. I thought, I thought so maybe I know that's a fake screen, but no, no. All right. Well, that's it for today. So we'll uh, until until next time. Yeah. Be safe out there. Bye bye. <laughs>